every night I've been waking up, I don't know, maybe like the Bible say, when you're old, you tend not to sleep so much. Like in my waking up hours, I sought the Lord. And this is where a lot of my messages comes from the Lord. When he start to inspire me, and he start to tell me what this church needs to go through, and where you are heading. So this morning, this text is going to be very, very personal and straightforward to you. It's from the heart of God. Uh, I don't know how to deliver it. I ask God, you have to show me how to deliver it. I don't want to offend anybody, nor do I want to make anybody, please anybody, make them happy. But God, please help me to deliver. You know, sometimes as a servant of the Lord, it is hard to say, thus say the Lord. Because then people will take it personal. Why pastor is after me? Why pastor is uh, so strict with me? It is not me. It is what God who loves you and died for you, he wants you to become. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, when Saul saw the host of the Philistine, he was afraid. His heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by urine, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that had familiar spirit, that I might go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that had a familiar spirit at Endor. We all know the story about King Saul, his humble beginning right to when he was high up as a king. And the Bible says he was the one further up verses that Saul put away in verse 3 even in his own city. Familiar spirit the wizard out of the land. He was the one that put away all this that God say, don't have in your land. Wizard, those two have this divinity stuff, you know, go into divin uh, this divine spirit, Uja board or whatever, soothsayer, witches, you know, put them out of the land. But here tells us he took God for granted. Anytime he wants God to tell him, God will tell him. Whether through the prophet, through the Uri, Urim, or through uh, someone, dream, and uh, the sad part is this time God did not even answer him, nor by the Urim, or the prophets, or anything like that. And because he couldn't get an answer from God, that means suddenly God is silent. He felt lost. And in his lostness, he went and said, I want to, the, the one with the familiar spirit, the one that do the divinations, I want to go and seek out one. Tell me where there is one. And they say, there is a lady in the place called Endor. And I will tell you what is Endor. It is people that has been from Manasseh tri tribe chased to this place called Endor. And the result is many of them practice all kind of divinations, all kind of 
soothsaying stuff, all kinds of belief. That is an abomination unto God Almighty. But what's the reason for a man like Saul, who was humble, where God raised him up, and suddenly he lost everything? It is true obedience. Obedience. And this is where we get the scripture. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. So I want to speak to you today. Keeping your faith through your relationship with God in obedience. Your faith is tied to your obedience. Your faith is tied to your obedience. In our faith, we must continue to obey God's word and instructions. Paul, he did obey God's word, but not instruction. Instruction is important. And so, Saul have taken for granted each time he get an answer from God easily. Like Samson. You remember Samson? He just had to shake himself. The Spirit of God will come upon him. I heard from a pastor when I was in Germany. He said, there was this fellow. Every time he comes to church, just to get himself assured that he is going to heaven, he will shake himself and speak in tongue, powerfully. Speak in tongue. And then, out in the world, he committed sin. He came to church. And God told the pastor, this fella, he has committed sin. And the pastor tried every way he can to get him to repent. But this fellow was so used to it that he just shake himself and speak in tongue to tell the pastor, I'm okay. So the pastor asked God, God, he's okay. He spoke in tongue, you know, powerfully. God say, it is not my spirit. And the pastor say, what? But he spoke in tongue, your language, God. What do you mean? It's not your spirit. God say, it is his spirit learning how to speak in tongue. That was a revelation to the pastor. It is the human spirit picking up the Holy Spirit how to speak in tongue. You don't believe me, you can try this. Speak in tongue. Okay? Tie my tie, untie my tie. Tie my tie, untie my tie. Tie my tie, untie my tie. That means tie my tie, untie my tie. Speak in tongue. I got a very hilarious grandson, Cedric. When he's happy, he starts speaking in tongue. Gibberish. I don't know what is it. I say, Cedric, are you speaking in tongue? But he's happy. And so it's go into all this funny, you know. I don't know what kind of word is that. Doesn't make sense at all. So I know he's just, you know, he's just been naughty. Maybe you have heard many of you speak in tongue. So Cedric is trying to learn to speak in tongue. He's not even baptized. He don't have the Holy Ghost. And so God told his pastor, this guy, he is way out his spirit pick up from the Holy Spirit learning how to speak in tongue. And unless this guy go back repent and get it right he's going to deceive himself. That's why the Bible say in the last day many would deceive themselves. Because of disobedience God has not answered Saul. And so with so much information today, you know, 
every day we are faced with all kinds of technologies, all kinds of super duper, you can say stuff from the world. It's a challenge. It's a challenge not only to you, to your family, to everyone that we have to keep up with it. And because of that, many people today, they tend to see and judge things from a very common perspective with their senses in the point of view. Listen to me. I'm going to make it very clear, very simple. I don't want to twist my tongue and go into, you know, making myself like, not getting the message to you. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, this is what he's got to say. To the end time, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. God already know this century, this technology century. In fact, I was telling my son, now that you are making money, and he's listening right now, Kenneth. I say, I need an iPhone 14. <clears throat> my old iPhone is, I think, outdated. So how about honoring your father? Buy me an iPhone 14. See, I can see many of you. I need one also, Pastor. There you go. People are restless in their life of pursuit of everything. And we got to take care because they are reluctant to do something disagreeable to them, although it is what God said. Even people in the church who believe in God so many insist on their own way and put it over God's word. You are not fooling God. You are not cheating on God. And God knows whether you are obedient or you are doing your own thing and you are deceiving yourself and you are hoping God would understand his word, his instruction is above all the cares and the issue of your life. I have learned in my ministry, for my family, for each and every one of you, the church, that I do not control everything. I am not a control freak. I do not control my life. And I have learned it even last year. And to this end, I will always ask God, now if anything, that my passion, my desire, my emotion, my feeling, try to override your word, stop me. Make me fall down. Like, the other day, out in the public, my leg gave way and I went like this. See, now even I cannot kneel down. <clears throat> I went like this. Everyone was shocked. They thought, what, what happened to you? Why are you kneeling down before all of us? You are so humble. Oh, man of God. And, ah, it's a problem getting up. And so God said, you preach on, I'm your strength. And so it is. Now you are going to see, without me, without my instruction, you are getting nowhere. And I have to pray again, Lord, I acknowledge you. In all of my ways, God, I will acknowledge you. I won't do my own thing. I won't try to say, twist God into my way. So if you are the one person, hello, online, you are twisting God in doing what you want to do, you, you are no better than our Frank King Saul. Yeah? 
And so the Bible say, it is impossible for us to obey God if we have self in charge. I repeat, it is impossible for you to obey God if you are leaving self in charge. Quiet. Online, they are quiet, I know, because they can't shout out and go through that iPhone. But those of you here, say amen. Only half. The other half, now the conviction comes in. You are not in charge of your life. You are not in charge of your decision. You are not in charge of saving that soul. It is not you. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. I always tell Jesus, without you, God, I can do nothing. Not even with my qualification, PhD. I got a relative, he's so fed up. Oh, with his own uh, relative, he said personal head damage. Study so much, he said he's damaged already. Give up with him. So it is not the amount of you know, education you have. It is not the amount of talent that you have. It is not how smart, how street wise. I used to think I was street wise. Because I went to India, they tried to cheat me. I outsmart them. I say, watch out. You are Indian, I'm Chinese. You cannot outsmart me. They tried to take me into some lane and try to rip me off. And I say, either you take me straight to Taj Mahal, no side way, no left way, no any way, just straight way. They say, all right, you are very, very outsmart me. And then I say, and I won't pay you 20 rupee. 10 rupee, take it or leave it. I'll see you in next life. That time I was not a Christian. And they say, you, you are a very hard man to negotiate. I said, take it or leave it. No food tonight for your family. Better take me there. So the tri took me there <laughs> to Taj Mahal. And then I went to Afghanistan, the same thing. So every country I went, all kind. I went to Turkey. Whoa, Turkey is Turkey. Don't drink their coffee. They'll kill you. It's like mud. I went to Turkey, you know. And the Turkey fellow with his long mustache. Yes, welcome to Turkey. I say, yes, what do you have for me? You know, so all kinds. That was street wise. And then in Germany, I beat up a bunch of fellas. I, I kind of, I'm a bully, you know, back then. No, not, not, not now. Now I'm, I'm a kitten for Jesus. Back then, I bullied those guys. You know, in Germany, I was a bad fella. I beat up the Turkish guy. I beat up the Greek guy. I beat up the Italian. Even German, I beat it up and they call me Sifu. They call me Sifu. Because, you know, I kind of fool around and have fun. But today, I will not fool around with God's people. I take it serious. And God changed me along the way. Many, many things. And so, what I want you to know, you cannot be reluctant to disagree what God say. If Jesus lives in you, obedience is easy. I say this again. If you allow Jesus to live in you, obedience is easy. The trouble starts when we don't allow Jesus to be the law of our life. When we do not proclaim Jesus, you are the law in my life. And so Jesus ended up partial, a quarter, not 100%. Because you know why? We are fearful and doubtful. We feel, God, I can do it better. Yeah. So to, the, to have the 100% faith, 
You've got to have works. That's right. Your works is going to show that you have faith. Otherwise, how can I see your faith? And so, in John 14, verse 21, Jesus said, Whosoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and show myself to him. Listen to me, precious people. You know why? When you pray and that is nothing, God never answer you. And then you pray again, God still never answer you. Then you need to check. You need to check. Am I obedient to the Lord? To His Word, to His instruction? You need to check. Because in the Bible, the patriarch of old, in the Old Testament, not a single, I study, not a single one of them never get an answer when they ask God. And I check every one of them, the reason God answered them, because they were obedient. Every prayers that I have prayed from day one until this day, it's either yes or no, God answer me. Even if it is no, God will say no. Yeah. And my wife is my witness. I've asked for things from the Lord and asked this and asked that. And God said, no, no. But then there are things that I ask from God. He said, yes, yes, yes. So if today you're praying and God don't answer your prayer, could it be like Saul? And the result, you can't get an answer. You can't. God, you can't hear from God and then you go to hear from man. That's dangerous. That's what Saul, King Saul did. He need to check it's because of his disobedience that God did not answer him. Faith is the essential part of your belief because the Bible says without faith, impossible to please God. But then, Faith is also accompanied by action. And this is the hardest part. Faith is accompanied by action. James chapter 2, verse 14 said this. Okay? By your action is your faith verified. Okay? By your action. Because otherwise, let me read it out. James chapter 2, verse 14. He says here, what do it profit? You see, there are the result, the profit, okay? My brethren, though a man say he had faith and hath not words, can faith save him? Very powerful statement. Can faith save you if you don't have Action. Faith cannot save. You. Got to have action. And so, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute, or well, we skip that. So, what the whole chapter two of James say? If you say you have faith in God, God wants you to show your obedience in your action. That means to say, you are going to put him first in your life. In his word and his instruction. You cannot do your own thing and then still say, I have faith in God. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. So, action means the obedience to God's word. And faith can be measured through obedience because obedience is the visible expression of your invisible faith. Yeah. Obedience is the expression. That's why, as far as God is concerned, 
the factor that broke the relationship between God and mankind from the day of Adam and Eve disobedient. That's it, disobedient. God say, don't eat of the fruit. They disobey God. And if God say, don't go there, you go there, you disobey God. If God say, do this and you don't do it, you disobey God. So, by your expression, it will tell God whether you obey him or not. A good example we can see is our Lord Jesus Christ in Hebrew chapter 5, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Let me quickly read that to you. This is what it says about Jesus Christ. Now, we know Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. And Jesus, or God, has come to show you by example. So, in verse 8, said this. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. See, a lot of us, we don't like suffering. Suffering financially, suffering in the health, suffering in the relationship, suffering in our life over jobs, over things we cannot control. But it will affect your faith. But here, it did not affect Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, and be made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Obedience, Jesus Christ, he was. And now, because he was obedient to God the Father, even so, he wants you, if you call him Lord and God, you got to be obedient to him. How? No, I like to do my own thing. I'm that type, like I told you, I'm a, I'm a streetwise guy. I was trained that way. At the age of eight years old, I know how to cook. I know how to sew. I know how to iron. I, I know everything because that was how my upbringing. Nine siblings. I, I was the middle child syndrome. And so I can do everything. And, and I grew up, become so independent, I can handle anything. There's nothing I cannot handle. You know, I can make food out of no food. Yeah, because one day, when I was young, my mom never came back home. She went too long, late in the night came back, because night kids. So there was nothing. And then we have this aluminum big pot, and there was a burnt layer of rice. That's all. And then there was no rice in that, that vessel, the container, just the burnt rice. And I look at my little brother and sister, my big brother all in school. I on the fire, warm up that burnt rice, and later take sugar, sprinkle, and break it up. Everybody have a piece of burnt rice. I can make food out of no food. No problem. That's me. So when I travel all this while before I come to the Lord, I know how to get money very easily. You know how I get money? I take a guitar and then I see all these German people passing by tourists. I open the guitar box and then I start to strum. Rasa sayang, eh, rasa sayang, sayang, eh. And, yeah, and those German, those European, they thought I was an artist. And they start throwing Deutschmark, you know. And then I'm on my way home with money. And that debt collection was enough to buy me one week of food. You see, I'm streetwise. I know how to. I won't bear because that is too out of my. But I will do some Rasa Sayan song. They don't know. Even when you sing I don't know, tune or I sing not the correct word, they also won't know. J, J, Smooth, 
Bila sakit naik atas. And then they thought, wow, this guy, this guy is good. You see, you're laughing. So it was not a joke. But when I come to Jesus Christ, I cannot do that anymore. Jesus said, you are in the palm of my hand, son. You are not going to outwit me. Don't do your own thing and say you still believe in me and call me Lord. You are going to be put through the fire and I'm going to put you to places you will not like it. And for once in my life, I have to learn it the hard way. And I'm here to tell you today, don't try to outsmart God. It's not going to do it. You know, you're not going to. You have to just obey Him. His prompting. When the, so there are things, you know, even until this day, when God prompts me, I will double check. And then I will go and my wife will follow me. My poor wife, sometimes she she say, where are you going? I say, God said, just go. Lah. You know, and she said, go where? Go to that uh, Bonio place. Lah. I will take her, she follow. And I say in my life, I don't believe in ghosts. I believe in evil spirit, but I don't believe in ghosts. I have encountered evil spirit. They follow me, they mess with me, but that is not something I'm afraid of. What I'm afraid of is human. It's human. Yeah, especially silent human. Especially if you're silent, I don't know where it's coming, where it's going. I don't know what you're thinking. And I can't see where it's, you know, because you, you look with, at me like that and I don't know what is coming or where. But evil spirit, I can just cast them out. They can't mess with me. Okay, I don't care whether it's haunted. You put me in a haunted house, I will haunt them out of the house. They will be haunted by me. Okay? So, but when it comes to God, don't try to do your own thing and outsmart God. And that's what King Saul tried to do. He disobeyed the instruction. When God said, do this, he do his way. Don't try to live for God and run your life. Don't do that. So it's time for obedience because it's better than all of your sacrifices. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus, he learned obedience. You know, obedience, you have to learn it. It's a lifetime learning from Jesus. The disciple for three and a half years, it was not even enough learning from the Lord. Because many of the things you read in the gospel, they do contradict to what Jesus tried to tell them. And Jesus at one point said, you don't know what kind of an attitude or character or spirit that you are. Because this is not my will. This is not how I would have it. But you guys are doing it out of your feeling, your emotion, your intellectual mind. You are doing out of that. That's why always I would say, like King Solomon, Lord, I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to say it. But God, if I were to face kings and president and all, please use me. You have used a donkey. So let me be like a donkey. Use me. And let me tell you, God will use you. When I was in America, you know, they put me up with all this Supreme Court judge, this senator, this fellow. I sit with all these guys, you know. I don't feel intimidated at all. In fact, I say, hello, I'm Liao. What are you? I am the Supreme Court judge, so and so and so. Ah, Supreme Court judge, how are you? I'm senator for the, oh, yeah, senator, how are you? I wanted to say, I'm the ambassador for Jesus Christ. Yeah, sometimes all these early positions don't intimidate you or I. You must remember who you are. You are the ambassador for Jesus Christ. And there is none like that on planet Earth. Praise God. And so we can see the obedience from Abraham. Okay, Abraham and you have uh, Isaac. You have Noah. And the greatest test, let me share with you what God showed me, is that 
everything that Abraham had from the day he was called out of earth. Okay? God say, I will be your God. I will give you everything. And sure enough, God, I mean, he's nomadic. You must understand. Abraham, I mean, he's not like you and I here, got nice building, nice car, you know. He was out in the desert with nothing. No animals, no flocks of sheep or, 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 or cows or whatever, or goats. But God said, I will give it to you. I will bless you. And so Abraham all along obedient to the very point in his life when God say, I will bless you with a son of promise. At the age of 100 years old, can you imagine? It's a long time. How many here today you are 100 years old? If you are, I will, I will quickly bow down to you. Okay? The queen only uh, uh, achieved 96. So if you are 100, we have to salute you. You have to sound a trumpet and throw a, you know, a grand <laughs> welcoming for you. So anyway, at 100 years old, and then he's got this son, son of promise, Isaac. And Abraham, his faith through his action, he knows all along everything that I have comes from God. And he knows what he's doing. So when God say, Abraham, I want Isaac, offer him. Now you must understand Back in those days, people don't do human sacrifice, okay? Doesn't make sense. And Abraham knows very well. In fact, God is against human sacrifice. But for all kinds of reasons, or even you know, in Abraham's mind, why would God, instead of animal sacrifice, he's asking me to sacrifice my son. Now, isn't that something to think about if you are in Abraham's place? God say, offer your son to me. And Abraham know, surely God don't want me to kill my son and offer it to him. I've heard all kinds of messages that Abraham where he, he, he obey and yes. But in Abraham's mind, he believed and trusted that God knows all things. God was testing his heart. God was testing his mind. God was testing his emotion. Surely God don't want a human sacrifice. Of course, it's a shadow of the type to come. Jesus Christ is the sacrifice lamb. But then, at that moment, when God said, Abraham, I want your son. It shows you and I, you cannot keep anything from God. Even if it is so difficult to obey, Abraham just shut himself, humble himself, strip himself, crucify himself, if you have to say that. He said, yes, Lord, I will offer Isaac. And he did not stop there. Because early in that morning, he took the wood, and he said, Isaac, come follow me. Isaac said, yes, Father, there is the wood, there is everything. You know, to like the field and where's the animal? What a question. Isaac asked Abraham, where's the animal? Again, Abraham said, oh, my. God, my son is asking, where's the animal? Can you see what Abraham is going through? But even against his gut feeling, so to say, Abraham, the Bible has this powerful statement, believe and trust in God. So today, I want you to know, you say you believe and trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you allow him to just lead you? Obey him. And that's why when I was called to come back, it was easy to stay back in Germany and go on to America. The land flowing with milk and honey. As many of our people that has already went there, you and I know who are those people. Yes. Before them, I was the first one. But when God said, you go back to Malaysia, I said, what? I come this halfway far 
and there is another halfway, I'll be in America. And you ask me to go back halfway to Malaysia. Now, for all you Filipinos and Filipinas, of course, you think Malaysia is great. La. At that time, America was great for me back in the 70s. I could become rich and own many restaurants and drive the Bentley and be so high and lifted up and lose my soul. Yeah, that's what it is. I will lose my soul. I would not marry sister, sweet sister Sherry. I would not have brother Cannon and sister Serena and brother Sun Sen here. And worst part is I would not even have Sheldon and Cindy to play with if I planned everything my way. But I trusted and believed God. And I say, God, whatever you tell me. But I tell you, it was not an easy road. I came back, I faced all kinds of trials and persecution. I held on. And I say, God, in your wisdom, you know everything. And God bless me. Because come Friday, I'm flying to Canada and Niagara Falls and New York, New York. And this is my fourth or fifth time. You see, sometimes we, we, we do so much thing because we yearn, we, 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 we get out like King Saul, we, we want to do it our way. And that is wrong. Because God has far greater than you can even imagine or even think of that you think your planning is going to be great. Today, I look back and I say, thank God I was obedient. Thank God I didn't try to outsmart God. Thank God I submit and say, yes, Lord, whatever you tell me. Against my gut feeling, against my you know, intellectual mind, I will obey you like an idiot. I will go. But God, in the end, I will enjoy and see your greatness. And today I'm telling you, my family, we are enjoying and seeing the greatness of God. And you are part of this church. And God wants you to see his greatness. You know, Abraham, when uh, Moses prayed, he said, God, show me your glory. What a, you can say, demand. What a request. God, show me your glory. But the trouble is, a lot of us, we want to see our own glory. Oh, I make it. Oh, I'm driving a Mercedes Benz. Oh, I'm traveling. Look, Tokyo. Selfie. Yeah, they tell the whole world. It's not great at all. It's pathetic. When you see God wants to take you further than you can ever imagine. And I believe I'm not the only one saying this. Because every servant of God, every man of God, he will tell you, they went through the life, not their life, but what Jesus would have them, exciting life. And I learned from people of old. I learned from Nona Freeman. Yeah, we met her. She would tell you fantastic story. If you were willing to be obedient and just obey God, and don't do your own thing and try to feel I still believe in Jesus. Let's all stand. Noah also has such great faith. When God asked him to do something beyond human comprehension, and you and I know in that period of time to build a big ark, it is a laughing matter. It is a ridiculous thing to do. But because Noah was obedient to God's command. He kept his faith. His whole family went through so many years of mockery. His, this family lost their marbles. God asked them to build this, what, what do you call this? Ark. Noah's Ark. 
but because he obeyed God, he saved himself and his family. If you obey God today, you are going to save not only yourself, you are going to save your family. And God wants to save you. How about Gideon? From fighting the huge army of the Midianite by the hundreds of thousands. And they have only 32,000. And God said, bring it down. When they brought it down, still, I don't need all the thousands. Just 300 men. 300 faithful and obedient men. The men were obedient when Gideon said, okay, let's go have a drink. But the rest not obedient, please go back home. And so over and over again tells us obedience brings all the blessing. I will say to you this morning, your obedience is going to bring you all the blessings of God. Because God said obedience is better than sacrifice. All throughout the Bible, right unto the end we can see, even to the book of Revelation, God wants obedience. Jesus wants your act of obedience today. I don't know where Jesus is going to lead you because it's going to be different from mine. I will share with you my story. You will laugh, enjoy it. But we also want to hear your story. We also want to laugh and enjoy your story. And God is not finished with each and every one of you yet. Some of you, you have many, many more years until Jesus comes. Some of you, maybe you don't have that many years. But whatever it is, each day of your life, learn to acknowledge God by submitting your obedience to Him. Maybe through your suffering, the Bible says Jesus set an example for you. He learned obedience through His suffering. Maybe you are suffering today because of your obedience to God. Maybe you are going through persecution your family, maybe your job. I don't know what it is. Because to every one of us, our faith must stand up. It cannot go down. We have to stand up. And so, the Bible says, in Leviticus chapter 13, chapter 14, talks about this disease called leprosy. Leprosy, they are visible. They involve the decaying and the corruption of the body. It serves as an excellent symbol of sinfulness. Sin corrupts someone spiritually the way leprosy corrupts someone physically. But is it the will of God for the defilement of sin, just like leprosy, to separate you from God? No. And so it's no. Like the ten lepers, when Jesus healed them, only one floor returned to give him praise and glory. The nine, they just forgot about Jesus. Why? Because they don't want Jesus to be involved in their life. They want to go about doing their own thing. Only one floor returned to say, yes, Lord. I will worship you. I will follow you. I will make you my God and my Lord. So today, you and I, we are delivered from sin. After that, what? Obedience. Obedience. Every day of your life. Acknowledge him. And say, God, I'm not going to outsmart you. Whatever you tell me, that will I do. That, my friend, you allow Jesus to live in you. That's your faith. So right now, we want to pray. If it is your first time coming to church, we want you to yield to the Lord, to let God be the Lord 
in our life. Very simple. And then to the rest, we want to tell God, God, I'm not going to outsmart you. You know what I face every day. I cannot rely on how smart I am. I can handle it, but God, teach me. Like a child, teach me how to face it. Faith in obedience. So it is up to you to respond. You know, but responding to God is always a plus factor. I will tell you that it's a plus factor because God in his riches in glory became poor so that you might be rich. Mm -hmm.